Broadcasting live from Buffalo State College, here is The Blitz on 91.3 FM. FM, WBNY Buffalo, Buffalo's original alternative since 1982, brought to you by the Buffalo State Studio Activity Fee. My name is Dan Dale, also known as Double D, and I'm only joined by one person right now, and that's Mr. Chris Jacobell. How are you doing, buddy? We're doing good today, Dan. How are you doing? I am so-so. I am so-so. You know, it's, it's not a bad day, but it's not a great day. Um... You know, I may go into it later in the show near the end of why I'm so so. Maybe not. I don't know yet. Uh, but how are you feeling about your project, Chris? We we do a sports marketing and management class together, and for our final project, it, it, it's like it it's not. I mean, it's technically our final exam, but it's just it's, a big like assignment of creating our own sports teams. And Chris, I just want you to explain to the listeners what your group, because it's a group of like five people, five, six people, what what your group decided on, what your sport's going to be, what, you, what are you going to do? Look, I'm usually one who rides the wave, Dan, and what my group wanted to pick, I was like, you know what? That seems interesting. Let's go for it. And you know what we picked, Dan? We picked Slam Ball, baby. How you get <laughs> Slam Ball? Of all the sports there are in the world, how do you filter it down to Slam Ball? Well, as you know me, Dan, you, you know I wanted to do soccer. Well, of course, of course. <laughs> I was like the only one in the group. And they're like, oh, we don't know much about it. I was like, all right, well, I mean, I'm game for anything. So they know that much more about Slam Ball? I guess. <laughs> I was just <laughs> That's such a weird thing. <laughs> I mean, it's weird if you ask me, but I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll roll with it. Uh, you know, that is we got this. great reasoning. Oh, we don't know that much about soccer, but you know that basketball it, on trampoline thing? Yeah, we know a lot about that. Well, the one the one dude in my group showed everyone like the vid, like the video of it, and I just looked it on my laptop. I was like, you know what? This seems interesting. It is cool. I'll stand like, behind it, I guess. You know, I'm not. <laughs> I'm the only person who wanted to do the one sport, so you know, I, I, mean, I guess I had any no other choice. Sports discussed before uh, that? Yeah, I mean, football was, but. They were like, oh, that just seems too basic. I was like, wow. Okay. I mean, ouch. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll get into mine after. I said the same thing. I was like, I mean, I'm down for soccer or football, but if y'all want to do something unique, I guess I'll, you know, I'll do it. Not <laughs> I'm like not going to say no. Lacrosse? <sighs> slam know. ball. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I didn't know much about slam ball until I looked it up that day. Trust I can't me, say I I'm an know expert, very little about it. but the only thing I know is that it recently got back on ESPN because the league restarted. They they like, I I think they were taken off due to, uh, injury problems. Like you know, people could land on their heads off the trampoline, and that's yeah. not that great. Um. I mean, I know that was, like, I think the main reasoning back then, and then people wanted it so badly, or some group of people wanted it so badly that they just said, fine, we'll do it. Yeah. I mean, it is entertaining to see, like, short little people jump 20 feet in the air and dunk. Oh, yeah, they have, like, you know, headgear, too, because I guess... Right. You know, well, you that was the know. big thing, dude. To... <laughs> yeah, slam in your head. <laughs> mm. But it definitely seems interesting, though. I mean, it, the only part that has the trampolines are, you know, what in basketball is referenced, the paint. Right. You know, basically, that's where all the trampolines are. Half court and everything is, you know, basically court what? style, yeah. But Which is crazy. It's like if you just fall off that trampoline, yeah, <laughs> you're going straight on wood. Yeah, you know. And somehow people are okay with that. Hey, you know I what? mean, it, it seems interesting to watch. So I guess people oh, are it watching. Be. It must be. <laughs> they must have an audience if you know if they. Have I mean, a... if the one guy really has a deep passion for it. Yeah, I was like, you know, what? it's unique. Might as well. I guess why why not do something unique? You know. I know for <laughs> our group, uh, yeah, I, I was kind of like the ringleader. Oh, so you're the leader. You're the Capitano. I don't want to. Trust me. I, that is far from what I want to do. 
in sense of final projects. Uh, I mean, I like doing things my way, but I also know my way is like my way or the highway. <laughs> uh, I, I learned that about myself. People do not like my style that much. Uh, but, you know, we all talked beforehand, mm-hmm. at least in our group chat, of like what we want to do. And we all just agreed football works. We all know stuff about football. It's not that hard. Um, we rather join the NFL or instead of try to create something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were like, um, you know, where are we going to put a team? Where, where in the, the world are you going to put a football team? We ruled out overseas right away. Yeah, uh, We just said, we don't need <laughs> London here. You know, no matter how many times the NFL states, oh, we want to get overseas more. Us, no. So we decided to, keep to it go in the basically off the idea that there has been talks about this city starting to get more momentum for franchises uh, from the MLB, from the NHL, not really much the NFL. But the we decided to go to Utah. That's an interesting destination. It is a very interesting destination. Why Utah, Dan? Why Utah? <laughs> because uh, for that exact reasoning, there's other franchises that would want to be there, uh, other leagues that want to at least try to expand there. So you're you're starting to get the up and up. It, it's like the perfect time to go. Okay, if you want to, if the NFL wants to be fancy and add a team. This would be a place to do it on the West Coast because there's not really many places left for the NFL on the West Coast. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, Salt Lake City sounds fine. It's the biggest city. Makes sense. Put it in there. And then we we wanted to find a name. Of course, we can't be the Utah Utes (laughs) because that's the college team name. That's really their college team name, the Utes? Yeah, the Utes. U T E S. Utes. Wow. Uh, you learn something new every day, Dan. I, I and know. That is something I, know. <laughs> I so, did not know. Uh I didn't even think of this, but now talking about it, I'm like Utah ukuleles, but it makes no sense <laughs> in context. It's just alliteration. Because that's what most NFL teams try to do. Alliteration or something that's kind of famous in that city. <laughs> I, I was searching, you know, Google, just trying to find something that would work. What Like, what's big in Utah? And we found out they have their own animal. They do? It's called the Utah Prairie Dog. So we just thought we would make an NFL team called the Utah Prairie Dogs. That's an interesting team name. Trust me, I started putting together at least, like, the... First slide of the presentation of just like here, you know, this is what we're called. Here's who we are. You know, just the normal stuff that you put on the beginning of the slide. And PowerPoint just decided, because I had the design tab open or like the template tab. um, And to the side, I just see this perfect background. Quite literally, 10 o'clock at night, I am not in like great mood to find things. Not the time for me to go searching for things yet. <laughs> and I just see this perfect background of prairie dogs. It gave me that by typing in prairie dogs oh. on the slide. So it's perfect. I'm like, presentation over. I won. Get me out yeah. here. Get me 100. <laughs> um, because it, in that class, we have to do a 20-page paper. Thank Which, God it's split up. Though. Right. It has to be, <laughs> it, it will be divided. Uh and then a thirty minute presentation, at least. Yeah, my one of my team members were like, Yeah, let's put like a video so that can be somewhat like explaining what slam ball is. Yeah. That like, yeah. Yeah. You probably need that. So that's like five, ten minutes right there. Yeah. So I mean you got twenty to go. Look at that. Quick maths. <laughs> <laughs> Trust but, uh, me, he wants us to make, like, an entrance. Yeah. I so, I, I don't know what we would – like, he, our, our professor uh, said that one year people brought in uh, fog machines. Yeah, when he said that, I was like – I was like, that is creative, but yeah. that is also, like, 
that's some extra, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's like bonus. Point I'm just level trying to there. like present. You know, here's my PowerPoint. Here's my slide. I'm good. <laughs> I'll just be up there standing yeah. awkwardly now. Uh, until my slide, I'll be standing awkwardly until my slide starts. I'll present, and then when my presentation over, I'm good. No, trust <laughs> me. When I'm going, uh, I always do this in almost every presentation I do that has a time limit. I ramble on. I really do. I you know, it's just me trying to fill in time in case if there's a mark. Because you can't really time yourself. Yeah. You know, unless if I'm going to hide my phone and have a stopwatch going, which I don't really want to Yeah, do. you don't want to be like, oh, my God, how much more time do I need to talk? Right, I don't want to <laughs> be paranoid Yeah. looking at a clock like, oh, my God, we're going to be under. We're going to be under. With all the presentations I've done, I've just come to figure out you just you just got to chat. And you just go up there, you talk. That's it, you know. Trust me. Don't think of, too much about it. One of my classes, because I'm a coaching minor, which is really okay. fun. Okay. Really fun. Really glad I'm taking that minor. Great minor. Um, for the first, like, introductory class, at least my professor, uh, because they switch, like, every semester, uh-huh. had us do a book report. So we had to do a book report on, you know, whatever coaching book you can find. So I did Marv Levy, where, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Great book. Read it through and through. Uh, you know, he said, at 10 minutes, I'm going to cut you off. You have 10 minutes. He decided to let me go for 20. He's like, you just knew so much about it. I'm just going to, you know, you just knew. He didn't even knew. tell you to and I'm stop. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I even asked him because I turned around and I'm like, why didn't you stop me? And he's like. You just knew what you were doing. I was letting you go. You like, blew him out I don't of care. the water, Dan. And, and he, <laughs> you know, he said, like, oh, if you go way over, I'm going to take points off. He I got a 99 out of 100. Uh, <laughs> what a point. <laughs> he took one what a point. point. <laughs> I will take a point. <laughs> he said points. I'll take a point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'll take that grade for the rest of my life, man. Yeah. <laughs> if I can uh, disobey the time limit by 10 minutes. And please and thank you. And only lose one point. Please and thank you. Yeah, that's not bad. No. He must have really liked the presentation. He must have really liked me. He right. must have really liked me, really liked my report. I don't know. Because trust me, I, I went on way too long of a ramble because sometimes I'm just like, okay, I can do this in 10 minutes. I know I can do this in 10 minutes. But it also buys me time in case if I rush on anything. Yeah. At the beginning, I was rushing, and then I kind of slowed it down, and then it became 20 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) People were not thrilled, because usually once you were done with, like, a certain... I think it was, like, we did eight, nine presentations a day. I mean, they were supposed to be quick. I mean, Mm -hmm. so they were, like, looking at me like, dude, you're making us stay here longer. I'm like, I'm sorry. The guy after me, though... Five minute presentation. I was oh, like, wow. I don't feel bad anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel so you that, know e- us together equal twenty five minutes of your day. That follow up. up was uh, <laughs> didn't live up to the expectation of your presentation. That man. No, probably. nobody <laughs> wanted to go after me. Trust me. Uh, he asked like, who wants to go next? And did he? Have it to it took like two minutes. Oh my god! For somebody to be like, yeah, I'll go next. Like, I guess I'll go after this great presentation of twenty. I know minutes. that that really boosted my ego (laughs) not like i already need that i mean trust me knowing myself i already have a big enough ego as it is love to brag (laughs) just a bragger like i i remember when i said i was an eagle scout on the show and i earned all the merit badges and i did this and that and this and that i just kept going and um you know evan de pasquale who was here Uh uh-huh was like, okay, you don't have to keep going. <laughs> it was like, we get it, Dan. We get it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying everything, you know? Like, what do you want me to do? I'm, I'm happy. I just, I brag. Big ego. Big awards. I can't yeah. stop myself, Big man. things. You're doing big things, Dan. Did I intro us? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. you did. You no, did. I just had to make sure. I lost my train of thought. Frank the Tank will be here. In now 15 minutes, uh, or should be here in 15 minutes, had some problem 
at his apartment. Joe also has a problem at his uh, house that he shares with a couple of his buddies. His toilet exploded. Oh, gosh. That sounds That's, fun, uh, right? <laughs> that seems fun to clean up. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, he, Joe, he's I like, yeah. He's okay. <laughs> no, he was supposed to be on. He comes in, and he just spends a couple of minutes with me. And uh, he's like, yeah, I would be here on the show today, but my toilet exploded. And I'm like, your toilet exploded? And he's like, yeah, just one time, water starts coming out from under the bottom, and yeah. And I'm just like... <laughs> gotta, gotta go back home. <laughs> it, it's funny. He lives with three other people, and not one of them are able to be there to wow. let the plumber in. So he has to so go back home go- and do oh, it. Man. Yeah. And even worse, it cost 90 bucks. Jeez. And the landlord is only paying for part of it. Wow. Yeah. I I'm like, dang. <laughs> doesn't the landlord, isn't he supposed to pay for, like, the whole thing? Yeah, because Like, he's... a fixing? I don't know how that works. I I don't. Yeah, I don't have my own I live at home. That, <laughs> I have my parents. You know, if something breaks at home, I don't touch it. I just go, hey, it's broken. They go, Okay, we'll deal with it later. <laughs> thanks for letting me know, Dan. Yeah, thanks for, <laughs> that is exactly what my parents say. You know, I don't uh, have to deal with living with people or giving people 400 bucks to live in their house. No, I don't want that. Man, let me live at home for free. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. No, no, you can't. <laughs> this housing market is, should have bought one in 08. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I was 10 years old. <laughs> right. But, uh, but have we talked about any no any football news? Oh, uh, there's some. I I wanted to uh, start off with NHL news NHL. first, Sharks just because they played win. last night. Just because they played. Also, still have a problem with ESPN Plus, but we'll get to that. <laughs> that may be a rant for another day. I I think all of our, uh, I I mean before on the show we've had this talk of ESPN Plus with. The NHL and it just doesn't yeah. work and blackouts and ugh. just yeah, makes you barf inside. Aren't like all the NHL games supposed to be on ESPN Plus? Yes, yeah, they are. And, and um, you can only watch the Sabers on MSG, right? Well, it, if it's specially like ESPN, it has to be special for ESPN Plus to watch it on ESPN Plus. So that means MSG is not carrying it. Wow. So besides that, every time I want to watch a Sabres game and let's say, you know, somebody's on the TV and I don't really want to, you know, get up and move to the couch and the family room, I don't feel like doing that. (laughs) You know, I I have my computer and phone right with me. Why do I need to move? But, of course, last night I tried to do that. It just hides the Sabres game from me. And then right as I get to it, it says blackout. And I'm like... This is lousy. And of course it was on MSG, but I heard MSG Plus is like 60 bucks a month. I've heard something outrageous wow, about it. Yeah. Like that it's just really expensive. And if I'm just going to buy that to watch Sabres game, that is just stealing my money. That is just straight up stealing my money from my wallet. Yeah, shout out to my mom for getting the uh, the bundle for the ESPN Disney and Hulu, so whenever, oh, that's fun. Yeah, whenever there's sports games on uh, on ESPN Plus, there are actually some soccer games on ESPN Plus. There are, yeah, so no, I, they do a good job of soccer. Yeah, I I like, even though this is under a take, uh, because people hate the double headed Monday night. People, I just learned, <laughs> despise Monday night double header. But I like when they do it on ESPN Plus and I'm able to watch a, you know, a game on my phone while I can have the other game on my computer or TV. Like, I kind of like that. Like, I wouldn't mind if they start making that a normal thing where on Monday night you can watch it on ESPN or ESPN Plus. Or the Manning cast. (laughs) Or the Manning cast. I'll take it. I'll take it. I, I don't care what they give me as long as I can watch football. Have, yeah. Speaking of ESPN and, and Monday Night, did you uh, did you see that Manning cast? 
Monday I night. I saw the clip of the goat of Arnold. Yeah, yeah. That, oh my god! I was what I was like. You know what? I'm gonna give Manning Cast a try tonight. You know, it, it's a game. Right, where it's, it's like, like the one time you try, <laughs> and then it's the crazy. And I was like, Yo, what seen. is going on right now? I was like, This man. Arnold has his own donkey, and you just see Peyton's face. He's just like, he's just so amused by it and just shocked at the same time. It's like, you can honestly argue that that was more exciting than the Monday. Than the Monday, yeah. Yeah, it kind of was. I mean, you could argue that the Chargers Jets game just did not live up. To any standard. The only highlights for that game was the Manning cast and who they had on there. Yeah. That's when you know it when the game was just like, oh my God, why did the NFL put And we'll see if the uh, Manning cast curse come back comes back because Trevor Trevor, Lawrence was on it. And uh, I remember I forget if it was a year ago or two years ago, where there was just that curse of when somebody would go on the Manning cast, that team would lose that next game. Yeah. I know uh, Jane was Josh Allen. Yes, Josh, Josh was Allen? on it, and we lost the very next game. Oh man! <laughs> yes, no the 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 main cast did live in the Bills. Uh, the main cast curse did live in the Bills. That was not fun. Uh, but besides that, I mean, Monday night really was boring. Yeah, I didn't. I I, I mean, the most exciting part was the punt return for a touchdown. Oh yeah, as the first point scored. Whoever had that parlay probably cashed oh, in. Oh, he would, <laughs> they were probably screaming up and down. But the Jets looked awful. You know, it's like I've been saying, if you just cover Garrett Wilson, the offense does not move. It just doesn't. I mean, Garrett Wilson only had 80 yards on the day, and it oh. just didn't work. Usually when they're doing well, he has about 113 or 130 off 13 catches. And, you know, that that's the main thing. But the Chargers finally said, well, what if we cover him? You know, bold idea. I know. Bold <laughs> idea in the NFL, covering a wide receiver. Uh, but Should teach the Eagles defensive backs how to do that. <laughs> Jeez. But nonetheless, it worked. You know, Brees Hall couldn't do anything. Zach Wilson looked like a shell of himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, that game ended what, like twenty-seven to six? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Because yeah, they didn't even get a touchdown in their own stadium. And I feel <laughs> bad for one of my friends in our fantasy football league uh, at work, <laughs> and he was facing off. And he had Garrett Wilson and oh, Keenan Allen. He was down by 30 points. He lost by seven yards. That's the word. He needed one more catch <laughs> from either Wilson or Allen. D- didn't matter how long. It could have been negative two yards and he would have won. That That's... That is just... Mm. That's a sucker punch right in the gut. I mean, trust me, I had that last year with Devonta Smith where no. <laughs> it was the Monday night game, and they were taking their first loss. I forget who it was to. Washington. Was it Washington? Last year, yeah. And then on the final play, Smith uh, pitches the ball, and it counts as a fumble against him. So I lose two points, God, that's and I gotta, lose. That's got to be the worst. Yeah, that was the <laughs> worst feeling of that night. That that was really, really harsh. I I wanted to just cry. That night, I was like, "Why? Why did you pitch it?" You know what I saw on on X today was videos of, because you you know talking about how you were feeling. Um, <laughs> they had a video of Carson Wentz that videos have been surfacing of him just how he looked after that Super Bowl win. Oh, and yeah. I want to get your thoughts on you know if you're a starting quarterback and you go down, obviously you want to lead your team to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. In this video, he just looked, he looks so depressed. Sad. What, you know, coming from a neutral fan yeah. perspective, what would, looking at that vi- video, what would you think if you were, you know. He's depressed not to beat Tom Brady in the Super <laughs> Bowl. I, I mean, that's a, a, a big reason to be sad. You don't cement your name in the legacy books by yeah. defeating Tom Brady. That's harsh. 
Um, but I mean, there's also Jalen Hurts when he got you know taken out of that championship game, and he w- was talking to reporters like, "Hey, I'm happy for you know Tua, even though he just got taken out." I right. feel like those you know how you just take those two things and just see how one has fared versus the other. Because I don't know if you saw yesterday, Wentz got signed with the Rams. Right. This is why I'm talking about it. Um, I just, I, you know, I was a Wentz fan at the beginning, but after his ACL and hearing reports that like, oh, he's not the teammate that, you know, people thought he was, he was, it just makes me appreciate Jalen even more, you know? Well, I think the also the other problem is when do you ever want to be taken out uh, with an injury that, you know, wasn't your fault? Yeah. It, it was really his leg got it was smashed a freak into kinda, pieces. Yeah, like two defenders just like, oh. Just let's, slammed into his <laughs> leg. Let's yeah. sandwich this guy's leg and see what happens. I mean, his most I, – I mean, that changed his career forever. Yeah, As dramatic. we know it, so – I I mean, and I feel like ACL injuries impact people differently too. You well, know? yeah, it always depends. It always... Joe Burrow had an ACL, did he not, or was that an MCL or a different both. problem? Yeah, okay. both. Tom Brady, I think, had an ACL injury way back when. One year, yeah, the one year he was out, two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. So I mean, I Matt mean, Castle. I guess in the end, it just depends on the player. Right? Yeah, no, it really does depend on the player. It depends on the rehab. It depends on, you know, how strong it is or how they're feeling. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, Wentz lost his entire running ability. Yeah. I no mean, doubt. you're kind of hoping that, I, I mean, you may see it in Los Angeles. You may not. He's just going to be a backup because. Do you think they got him for insurance for Stafford just yes. because he's so injury? I feel like no, Stafford... it's not insurance for Stafford. It, it's more like if we come to the point where we need a backup, we don't trust anybody else that we have in our system. It's kind of like Baker. You know how they signed Baker last year? Yeah, late season signing. I mean, I know it was after he got released by Carolina, mm-hmm. but. He still performed, you know, right, well and that's for the them. thing. I mean, Stafford was just dealing with a shoulder injury that he just couldn't, or elbow. It was the elbow that he just couldn't throw the same. Yeah. I mean, this year Stafford looks different. He's not that injured. I mean, all he did was hurt his thumb, and he's on by this week, so he'll be back next week. It was just more like he hurt his thumb. He can't really grip the ball or throw the ball. Brett Rippon's not doing it. I mean, when you only score three against Green Bay, there's something wrong. Yeah. Uh, so they just said, screw it. We'll give another veteran another chance and see where it goes. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if uh, Wentz gets the nod, if, you know, God forbid something happened to Stafford. Not saying I, I want anything to happen to Stafford. Right. But, you know, there's always those freak incidents in these games where you just never know. Right. Uh, and while talking about a former Eagles player, there's been breaking news about a current Eagles player while talking about this. Uh, Mike Garofalo reported that linebacker Nicobe Dean has been diagnosed with Liz Frank, Liz Frank sprain. Uh, so Dean now has to go oh see a foot specialist to determine a course of action, but he's expected to be placed on IR. You know, Dan, that is the first I am hearing about this. <laughs> Eight minutes ago. Eight minutes ago it was breaking you? Okay. So that's a linebacker down. That's one of uh one of a good starters, signal too. caller. Yeah. That hurts. So I mean with the defense we have uh, I'm not happy. Not happy. This is something you don't want to see. I mean, we got Dallas Goddard now injured with a fractured forearm. Yeah, thanks. He's gonna be at yeah, thanks. Dallas Cowboy, did you did you see how? Did no, you I did not see how the end like hurt. any of the highlights or anything no. of that game. If you watch how Dallas Goddard gets tack- tackled in slow mo, you can see this guy because he's he's stiff arming the guy, mm-hmm. and this guy just is like, okay, I'm gonna take your arm and twist it. <laughs> like, is this not like wow? That's like great. clear as day that this guy knew what he was doing. And you were like, oh, the only guy, the only way I'm going to tackle this guy is by twisting his arm and possibly fracturing it. 
putting all my weight into this guy. I mean, and just seeing that is like, wow. How did this guy not get flagged, you know? <laughs> it's great because in my fantasy week, I do have Goddard as my starting tight end. And uh, hearing that news broke my heart. And Chris, you're not going to like me. It broke my heart. But but there was a uh, man on the waiver wire who was, uh, he shouldn't have been there. <laughs> and it's a Dallas Cowboy. Oh, gosh. So I picked up Jake Ferguson last night. <laughs> I mean, you got to do I, what I you got to do, right? <laughs> replace the, the Eagles guy with the team that just broke his arm? Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, we're we're going to head to break. And when we come back, Frank the Tank will be taking us the rest of the way. Uh, so keep listening to the Blitz on 91.3 FM. Buffalo has to tag up. Darlene with it. Colleen played off the boards to himself. And he'll score! A surprise move caught everybody as Rasmus Dahlin passed to himself. And the Sabres defenseman has Welcome to on the power. Back to the Blitz on 91.3 WBNY Buffalo. Buffalo's original tournament since 19. 19- 82, I'm your host, Frank the Tank. I missed the first 30 minutes, but we're back, baby. We're back. Joining me in Studio B was the man previously hosting for the last 30 minutes, <gasps> Double D Dan Dale. Hi, buddy. Hi, bud. And over there in Studio B, Mr. Philly, Mr. Broadly Shove, Mr. Broadly we Love, Christopher Jacobello. Frank, we missed you the first 30 minutes, buddy. You know, I missed you guys, too. You know, I had to... You know, I had to put some people down, you know, got to tell them how oh. it is, got to deal with some business, you know? Oh, jeez. No, I just, I had to call my bank real quick. That's it. That's all I needed to do. <laughs> but, um. Yo, bank, give me money. That's rude. That's not what I said it's at very all. Very aggressive. Like you you First off, you do it in person, you do it with a mask. Oh, my God. That's how you get money from the bank. That's not yours. <laughs> Frank S- tips. <laughs> Speaking of robbery. I heard you guys were talking about ESPN Plus not being able to watch the Sabres game. Mm-hmm. How dare they? Blackouts are the reason that the ruining sports and why streaming, or I should say illegal streaming, whatever, I don't mm-hmm. care, is becoming so popular is because we can't watch our games. Yep. What's the point of paying so much money a month for these subscriptions and TV deals if we can't even watch the Sabres lose to the Hurricanes in overtime? What are we doing? At least we made it to overtime. At least we yeah, did. You got a, a point. You got a point. I, I really do. Against <laughs> watching uh, that game. But against the Hurricanes, who are poised to be probably the second or third best team coming out of the East. You know, it's nice to get a point off them. Obviously, you'd want the full two, but. I'll take what I can get. You split it with Carolina. Take you help. what I can get. But because I, I believe that game, we did not deserve to be in that game. No, not at all. Why? Oh, we were getting, like, you know how that Flyers game went? 5-1. to one. Also, I want you to know that looks so much worse now that, that they've lost to San Jose. Yep. Yeah, giving them their first win. I know. Crazy. That loss looks <laughs> so much it worse does. now. Yeah, I knew it. I, sa- I even, like, I remember seeing... The NHL or ESPN tweeting out, oh, when will San Jose get their first win? And I'm just like, Flyers. <laughs> uh, my, I, I knew it. Yeah. I was just like, the Flyers. Yeah, and my first thought wasn't even like, oh, congrats for San Jose. My first thought was like, oh, this looks awful for the Sabres. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, but I mean, we were just getting destroyed on the ice. And not destroyed in the sense of, all goal scored and shots. It, it was just it was like a. I didn't. I Carolina only saw. Carolina is aggressive. Yeah, aggressive. Um, I I mean, Tate tried to do his fancy little dangles, and none of them worked. Of course, I saw the tweet, and it was just like it's Tomer time, and I'm like, when when did Tomer become a thing? Has Tomer always been his Tomer's nickname? Tomer's always it's it, it, it's been Tomer and it's been TNT. I that, know TNT. That's man's two things. Yeah. I don't like Tomer. Tomer time or middle stat mode. 
that's our two like yeah. big big uh time on the clock oh we've got so many down in florida uh yeah okay. you got lamborghini kachuk kaching there's only two I can think well, of right now. Well, times on the <laughs> clock. I mean, we had Miller time, which made Miller Lite. Yeah, very popular. Very popular. Uh, but I really did not believe the Sabres should have gotten a point out of this game. But hey, you know what they I, did I mean, against a very good Carolina team? Look, Darlene gets a goal. I, I would like, a, and this is coming from the Tanner Saunders side of my heart. Stop crapping! Anu Kapekalukanen! He was amazing last night. Was he? Amazing. Like, look, he only had one bad play, and it was in overtime. It, it was that he decided not to cover up the puck mm-hmm. and allow the play to continue, so it didn't allow our line to sub off when Carolina was able to sub off. Yeah. So it was just a fresh line against a just burnt-out line. Yeah. And uh, Lukanen should have covered it. I mean, I understand the reasoning of wanting it to keep going, but uh, no, not he knows for next time now. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, I mean, he he had a day. He had a great day. Good. He was. But I think we've all been. Have you? You've been on the Uko Pekka Lukanen train. I for, love Uko okay. Pekka Because I know some other people in here. Not in here. Don't worry. Not you. You know, some people have started to lose faith and just, you know. He's a great backup. I Look, think he's a fantastic backup. I, I'm already saying, Eric Comrie, you are now an Edmonton Oiler. <laughs> like, please, ship him off. I'm done. I don't need to see more. I think this is what they wanted from Lukanen when it was preseason. Yeah. I just think he needed to face the better guys to see the best of himself. Because preseason, you get like the AHA or AHL guys, you get some ECHL guys, you get some starters. It's like a whole mix. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to do well against them, but it's also like, you can do bad. It's preseason. It's Who cares? Preseason, you know, you're gonna have your backup role. Right. That I would have loved to have seen some kind of low value, not low value trade, but some kind of, you know, not ridiculous trade for the Panthers. Because obviously we have Sergei Bobrovsky. Right. I would say. Eric Comrie, you're now a Panther. I was going to say Uko, but calm down. I don't want Eric Brick and Michael. You don't want Eric Brick? Calm down. No. I mean, Eric Brick is injured, so you we probably can't trade him right now. I know. That's probably against rules. And tonight I think we face the... Capitals. Capitals, yes. And you're on TNT? Yeah, we are, baby. We just came back on beating the Columbus Blue Jackets in a 4-5 to five Beautiful game. I almost Sloppy. called you losing to yeah. them. I almost called you losing to them. We, which is amazing that we I started the first ten them. minutes and we scored three. It was Barkov, uh Forsling, and Nick Cousin no, Cousins got the no, Nick Cousins. Those were the first three. It was funny, you only allowed, I think, nineteen shots to Columbus yep. and they still scored four. Mm-hmm. That's gotta be scary. Yeah, it's fine though, because Carter Verhage is him in overtime. He is him. It's if it's overtime and Carter Verhage has the puck, you just know you're bound to hear, "Let's go home, baby." Because, I mean, it's what we do. It's what he does. Look, Frank. I'm sorry to say this. We're the cardiac cats. We're the comeback cats. We're just, you know. I I am sorry to say this because this is like going against almost every bone in my body. Well, are you are you this. a point higher than us? No, I need Alex Ovechkin to beat are you Carolina's d- butt. Oh. Or to beat the Panthers by. Why? Do you have him in fantasy? No. I just need Ovechkin Why? to beat the Panthers. Why? Why is that a thing that you need is for Ovi to beat us? Because I need the Sabres to move up in the standings. I hate you. You have two games ahead of us, okay? And guess what happened last year? When it got down to the nitty-gritty in the last week, I was over here having a panic attack because I'm like, oh, we're, we're three games ahead of everyone. We're not going to make it. And then you made Now it. we're in this position where we can play back and still have room to, you know, move around and just be able to pick up some points. I don't, I don't want to go through that fear again. So, no. I want to pick up one or two points 
every game and not just do it like this. So, no, I don't want Ovechkin to win. I I need him. Like, I, I it goes, like I said, it goes against every bone in my body. But just so the Sabres can move up into standings and get a game back of you, I need it to happen. I don't. Well, of course you don't, but I need it. Look, the Sabres are still two points behind the, the Red Wings. We're three points behind You're the third. Are you, la- are you second to last or third to last? We're third to last, baby. Let's go. Listen, no one... But the Canadians still have a game on us. No one's catching... Oh, that's fine, man. No one's catching up to Boston anymore. It's already like last season. Oh, yeah. Which means nothing because... <laughs> game seven. But, um... What? It's that President's Trophy. It is. It's a curse. No, I, did you see <laughs> it's that? It's literally uh, a curse. I, I sent a video to you, Frank. Or it's, when? It was directed to you. You were at work, and uh, it was Steve Dangle saying about how <sighs> the Panthers are raising a flag about how they came second. We're and not. I, I mean, you, you do. You did. I believe you did. It's it's just weird. Where the you get to look at that every time and say, "Wow, we almost did something amazing." We were Eastern Conference champions. That's a good thing to celebrate, is it not? Wow, like we almost won the Stanley Cup. Every baseball team puts up a banner for when they make the wild card, divisional round, championship series, or the World Series. It's it's you the don't same see thing. that for the NFL though. You don't see people celebrating uh, Super Bowl runner up. Oh my! I want to I want to say so many things. Fire Sean McDermott. Anyway, we'll get off of hockey into a sport that, you know, we're trying to develop in this country. Slam right? ball. No. Slam ball, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, we're talking here. about the pickleball championships, guys. Come <laughs> on. We're not talking about swimming? I hate you. <laughs> Lacrosse? Stop it. No one cares about the NLL. Polo? Whoa, whoa, hey. I'm sorry, except, except for Buffalo, hey. which is the only thing they have going for them. Hey. NLL. Hey. They're amazing. Don't you dare. I'm not saying anything bad Don't about the Bandits. Dare. I'm just saying there's Don't only one city crap. in this entire country that cares about lacrosse. Toronto does. Dog, they have the Maple Leafs. Rochester does. It's Rochester. It's either you watch lacrosse or you get mugged. <laughs> well, we just lost everybody listening in Rochester. I can dump. It's Buffalo. People get bugged. Bad. People get mugged everywhere. Yo. It's just it's just, what? <laughs> <laughs> you get mugged. You get mugged. You get mugged. It's like Oprah. Listen, but she's a criminal <laughs> just saying you're going to get mugged. You're going to get mugged. <laughs> Listen, if you're walking on Chippewa at night at like 2:30 at night after getting out of like bottoms up or venue, there's a chance. That's all I'm saying here. Anyway, talking about the great sport of soccer and or football depending on what you know, what you call it, your preference. But we're talking about our soccer, our American soccer. Talk about the MLS. Because currently we are in the middle of the MLS Cup playoffs, which are always fun. But unlike if you do follow, I just opened a new tab. That's weird. <laughs> if you follow like the Premier League, uh, League Un, Serie A, or um, La Liga, they obviously do the first place. They win it all. Then there's sort of a relegation system, and the three go into the champion. It's you know. they also have tournaments like within. Yeah, the they have too. they have tournaments. Champions League, like obviously FA the Cup one, and FA England, Cup, Carabao Cup. Cup. It is yeah. kind of weird that the MLS Cup does like American style. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not like aggregate. No, like a normal Champions League way, you know, where you get two games and you add to score together. It's just like. Yeah, we're doing best of three. How how yeah, just, American can you get? Eh, <laughs> they're like, you know what? We know this soccer, or we know this soccer sport is popular in Europe. We're gonna change it a little bit. Seems I mean, like the MLS was. I mean, <laughs> is it a best of three throughout the whole playoffs, or is it just round one? Just Actually, round just one. round one. Yeah, because I'm looking at it, it's like semifinals or one. Yeah, game and then the rest is just a knockout. Why? Yeah, it makes no sense. Why? Like, why would you make it American? You know what they for can the do first part, and they'd be like, "Nah." Well, we don't have leagues to relegate to. That's true. Yeah, but you know what they can do? I feel like to also make 
somewhat a little more money is have these games aggregates. Yes. Like dude, they they are so just the much whole money. like the whole knockout stage have it as aggregate. Why are you going to have just the one round one yeah. as a best of series? Like that makes no sense. It's dumb. But we will go uh over just each uh bracket that we're in. So the first game, um, first bracket is St. Louis versus Sporting Kansas City. And so far, what's been the biggest upset is the one seed St. Louis, who I've been, I think, in the league. Has, is this their first year? Or I'm is not, this their second too year? I'm sure on that. I think this is their first or second year. And they lose to Sporting Kansas City, who are, I mean, at this point, a staple of the MLS. They were founded in 2019, Frank. 2019? Yep. Four years ago. Four years ago. Oh. Well, they they were founded, so but I don't the think they were brought into the MLS. Into the MLS. Uh, uh, joined Biz- in 2023. As yeah. The okay, so. Because Orlando right. City was founded in, like, 2010, yeah. 2009. And then they and had to, like, get all those players yeah. and stuff, like, that whole thing. But Sporting Kansas beat St. Louis. Uh, as of right now, they... Ooh. We've got... We're going to Game 3 between Houston and Real Salt Lake. Houston was the first game. Real Salt Lake wins the second game on penalties. That'll be a fun So you one. win the second game on penalties, but you still have to... Th- that just makes no sense to me. It's it's dumb. As someone who watches European soccer since I was like five years old, it just makes no sense. No, we do it so dumb. <laughs> we do it so wrong. And the other bracket in the West, it's um, everyone's favorite, LAFC. They beat the Vancouver White Cups. And what was... White caps. I said cups. Whatever. They won last night in what I've been seeing around Twitter in a pretty um, controversial way. Oh, yeah. The ref knocked down one of the players, which led to the counterattack. To, oh, it's to straight score up. The goal. That, yeah, that should have been called right there. Yeah. And there. And it's clear as day, too, that the ref just, like, elbows him yeah. out of the way. And it leads straight to the counterattack for LAFC to score. Oh, it, was off, it. it was off a corner. I would be And they got the clearance, so they were able to, like... And the goalie was out in the corner, so... Yeah, I would be so furious. And they were trying to check it for offside, and they were like, no, LAFC won. Because it's LA. Of course it is. And then the other one, the last bracket in the West, is the Seattle Sounders versus Dallas FC. Seattle wins the first game 2-0, and then Dallas comes back on a little little rebound here and wins 3-1. Send that game into a game 3. And then... The best side, the east side. Number one seed, Cincinnati versus the uh, Red Bulls of New York. Of re- New York, <laughs> who play in um, like 30 minutes south of Newark, New Jersey. So whatever. <laughs> they um, they win the first game, and then they win the second game on penalties. Good for them. Whatever. No one likes Cincinnati. Your Philadelphia Union. Win their first game against the New England Revolution. 3-1. Whatever. (laughs) Should have won it last year and you didn't. Failed. Choke artist. You know how many Philadelphia teams were in the finals last year? Every single one. And they all lost? It was just like... um, What a depressing city. It was Miami, too. (laughs) It's funny. U of M made the final four. Yep. Panthers. Yep. Heat. Marlins make the playoffs for the first time ever. (laughs) And now you lost your GM. The Marlins lost their GM. Yeah, I was going to say, not my GM. Bro, yeah, not your Which team. also, the stupidest thing. Well, I mean, yeah. we'll talk about that at a later date, but the Marlins firing st- Kim NG is the worst no, thing. No, it wasn't even them firing them, her. It was more that they were going to bring somebody in to be a consultant of her. She literally turned that whole team around. And she didn't want that, so she just straight up said, no, I'm leaving. Good for her. Mm-hmm. The second to last bracket, we have Columbus Crew versus Atlanta. Um, hate both of these teams <laughs> with a with a burning passion. But your team will have to face one of them. And we'll get to that. We're, we're gonna get to that. Columbus wins the first game two nothing, and Atlanta storms back to win four two. They'll have a game three, and then in the final bracket in the East, you got Nashville versus the team that's gonna win it all. I got it. Where, is my sticker on here? Yes, yeah, it is. is. I've been riding purple since 2000, 2014 because I had one of their old jerseys where their logo was a little bit cooler. 
<laughs> but since then, if you're driving around Orlando and just honestly even Florida, South Florida, you're going to see this on every single car. Because all of a sudden this is, well, now it's Miami, but no one cares. It was messy. But for, we've had a, such a good hold on Florida that it's still purple to the day I die. Orlando City beats Nashville in two games, both one nothing games. They're going to go on to face either the Columbus or Atlanta. I mean, no one's stopping us. We've been we've been underrepresented, represented, yeah, mm-hmm. underrated, overlooked, every single synonym of that nature. Orlando's going to win the MLS Cup. I didn't even realize they were second in the, in the yeah. East. No, we're no one talked about us, but we were very sneaky. Quiet good. team. That's uh, those are the ones who sneak up on you. I wish we had Nani back, but it's fine. I like this team. <laughs> I miss Nani so much. Anyway, goat. 259. And we have breaking news. Breaking news. Uh, the NFL is now allowing underclassmen to be... Uh, so college juniors who declare for the draft will now be eligible to play in the Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl, and HBCU Legacy Bowl. So they finally did something that works. Cool. cool. Well, no, because the the big thing about it is that teams, you know, they go to those games, like yeah. the Senior Bowl Scouting. and stuff. What? Scouting. Yeah, they scout it. And uh, last year, 69 juniors entered. The draft, but they couldn't play in an all star game, uh, so it's like to get another look at them, yeah. All right, that's fair in a game, so it, it's actually a smart idea, yeah. That's by the nice. NFL. They actually they did something smart. <sighs> that's breaking news, though. That has nothing to do with Roger Goodell, probably not, but breaking right. news. That's fair. Well, I'll probably gonna take a little break right now when we get back since Friday is Veterans Day. We're going to do our picks a little early, and we're going to pick our picks. Pick our picks. I like the sound of that. For week 10 of the NFL. I can't believe it's already week 10, guys. We're, we're almost nearing the end. I don't like it. It's beginning November. It's and beginning it's, to look a lot. <laughs> don't finish that word. Look, after... I like Thanksgiving. <laughs> I like food. I do. Let me. <laughs> don't. Not yet. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to be very lost after the season ends because this is how I Because at usually... this point, it's, yeah. No, at this point, this is how I, like, know what week it is. I'm like, okay, Bills face this team this week. It's week 11. And once, honestly, once the regular season ends, obviously, like, once the playoffs start, obviously, but, like, that's when we start hitting a lull when it's just basketball. And obviously hockey going on. We all love hockey. Soccer's always going on. Soccer's always going on. <laughs> Champions League. I mean, it's going on. on right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our picks ready for you. Give a little analysis and let you know what we think. You will listen to the Blitz on 91.3 WBNY. Welcome back to Blitz on 91.3 WBNY. I am still your host, Frank the Tank Lopez. Still with me, Double D, Adan, Hadeo. Hello. And still with us over there in Studio B, Mr. Philly Chris Giacobello. Here. Here. A couple of Johns over here. John. John. You know what? You know what that music means? It is Wednesday. Usually we like to have a little wacky, weird, whimsical Wednesday. But today, we got to get down to some business. Business? Yeah, take care of them boys. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Oh, we did take care of them boys. Calm down. (laughs) Calm it. (laughs) Barely. Settle. (laughs) And that'll that'll be a sentence true to come soon in the upcoming weeks when the Bills face the Cowboys. But not this week. Because this week is week 10. And we're going to start by making our picks. 
with the Thursday night football game between the um he's shorter than me, so he shouldn't be playing football, Bryce Young, and the um we just suck Chicago Bears. Chris, go first, then Dan, then me. Yeah, I don't even really know who to pick on this one. But if I were had if I did have to pick someone, I'm gonna go with the Panthers. I think they're gonna find a way to win this game. I just don't see much from the Bears. Panthers are getting a, a win on this one. No Justin Fields again. He's officially doubtful. I was going to say, he's doubtful, but he's not out. Yeah, but Rap Report said he's probably going to be out. So I'm going to take his out. I'm going to go Carolina as well. You know, whoever wins, Chicago's still going to get the first pick. So <laughs> who cares? Exactly. This is just a battle between the number one pick and the number one pick, and the Bears are winning somehow. I am, for one, taking the Chicago Bears, though, because, you know, NFC South, I don't want to see the Panthers win. But also, I think the Bears have the better talent to win. Like, they should be winning games. It's just that they suck, so they don't win games. And that's unfortunately how it goes in the NFL. But I think this game will show a different story. We've seen how explosive they can be with that breakout DJ Moore game and the Justin Fields incredible game. Mm -hmm. We know that the talent is there to produce and win games. But Jesus, can they? are they awful? So I'm going to take the Bears on this one for Thursday Night Football. Heading into Sunday. Sunday morning? Hold on. Is... is is this a game that I'm missing? What? Where is this? There, there is a game, in what? a different, in a different city. Different city. What's in what? a different country? Country. What's the country? Is it? I think you know what it is, Frank. It is Frank. I think you're gonna do the voice. Hold on. <laughs> I gotta, Please hold. I gotta look up. I Loading. Please I don't know, wait. While I don't know how you find this type of music. Please listen to this while your call is important to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my there god. Guten Tag, guys, <laughs> y'all. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, just, yeah, that was no. very short lived. <laughs> there you go. Nope. I. What? Wh- uh, stop. <laughs> oh, I see what I have to do. What do you have to do? Guten Tag, everyone. Yeah. For this Sunday at 9.30. We have the New England Patriots. Yeah. Versus the Indianapolis Colts. Chris, take it away. Well, this is going to be an early one. Um, yeah. God, who do I even pick in this one? You know what? Let's ride Minshew Mania. Colts don't have a good defense. But this game is in Germany. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't think Mac Jones is going to play that well. Give me the Colts. They're going to get to 500. And they're going to be riding behind Minshew Mania. I, I love this. <laughs> I love this, Frank. German Frank is is great. Um, I, I'm as well going to take Minshew Mania. Minshew? <laughs> Minshew Mania. I, I think Minshew's going to show up. With just a keg of beer. And that dude <laughs> I can is going to down one. And, and, and guess what? Bill Belichick's not going to know how to respond mm-hmm. to that. He's just a guy at the bar drinking tequila. He's just not even supposed to be there. He's just like, I don't know what's good here. I'll just take a tequila. Not like Germany's known for anything. You know, like beer. <laughs> uh, whoa. <laughs> No, I was just saying, like, Bill Belichick going, like, My guy, oh. Frank, is just <laughs> got to settle down. Jeez, you always overreact before I finish my comment. Well, you need to finish the comment before you leave a big pause. <laughs> but that always leaves great suspense. I'm taking the Colts. Colts are going to win this game. New England, bye-bye, Bill Belichick. Boys, it's time to bring out the brooms. We're calling it a clean sweep. A Minshew mania. Is going to run all over Berlin. And Bayern Munich will be the second best team in Germany that day. By the Indianapolis Colts will win 
versus the New England Patriots. What if Germany, what, what if the Colts score more points than Kansas City and Germany just thinks the Colts are better than Kansas City? I mean, I would say the Colts are better than the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, let me let me retract on that statement. This is great. I, I love this. It's a Mac Jones is no good quarterback. You, you know, me- Frank, you do know this is the last time we get to play funny music. Ah, uh, gonna miss the German games. Oh, it's no! <laughs> nine! No! That means no, Frank. Oh, that nine. means no. Welcome to Dusseldorf. <laughs> the Indianapolis Colts beat the New England Patriots to make it a clean sweep here at the Bleeds. Oh, what's happening? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! We're back! To America, baby! We're back! back. <laughs> we're back! Oh no, Frank is evolving! <laughs> <laughs> press me! Press me! <laughs> no! I've got a bald eagle sit on my shoulder now, boys. I couldn't be more proud oh. for the game we get to announce right now. The Cleveland Browns versus the Baltimore Ravens. Chris, I'm flat out picking the Ravens on this one. Lamar Jackson has been balling out. Granted, the Browns do have a great defense. They're going to, sh- they're going to, Lamar's going to struggle a little bit, I believe, but they're going to find a way to pull out this dub. I am, as well, taking the Baltimore Ravens. I just think Lamar, I, I just need Lamar not to score. I need Jamarone Ford not to score. I just need. Can we just score field goals? <laughs> I'm okay with like 18 to 15 or, you know, all field goals, you know. I'm open to it, uh, but I'll take the Ravens nonetheless. I got to switch it up, boys. Ooh. I think Cleveland pulls off a little upset, even though I really don't think it's that much of an upset. You're, you're taking? I'm taking the Cleveland Browns. I think that defense is going to rattle and shake Lamar Jackson to his core. What? Why are you so surprised? You're taking the creep. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he said no, I can't. <laughs> you forgot he was back. Ravens, 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 <laughs> Ravens, Ravens win. Lamar Jackson has the best day of his life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a quick switch. Man almost <laughs> the guy every show that he says is deserves to be in jail. We're making it a sweep. We're making it a sweep. We're making it a sweep. Cleveland <laughs> Cleveland loses. He completely forgot. Just complete 180 that. No, nope, I'm picking the other team. <laughs> That's great. I thought he was out. Nope, he's playing. He played last week. That's why they beat Arizona so single handedly. And nothing to do with him. <laughs> Worst person in the NFL right now. Uh, yeah, Baltimore wins. They continue their winning ways. Lamar has a great day. Uh, Odell has a touchdown. I'm just going to say it. Odell has a touchdown. Two in a row, f- two in a row in a week. Let's get it done, Odell. Next game. Huh. We've got two juggernauts on this one. The Green Bay Packers versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, oh, boy. I'm going to have to... Picking the Steelers on this one. Um, Green Bay hasn't really shown shown anything lately offensively. Um, I mean, same could be said with Pittsburgh, but I just feel like the Pittsburgh offense has more of a chance to win this game versus Green Bay. Um, so I'm picking the Steelers on this one. Dan? I am choosing the Green Bay Packers. Cool. I'm going a little bit of a shocker here. I like Green Bay, man. I, I mean, they just beat the Rams. I understand that was without Matthew Stafford. But it's a Matt Canada offense. If they don't score over 20 points, they don't win a game. So I just think Green Bay can just sneak by and get a win. I'm going to agree. I, I like Green Bay. I like Jordan Love. Made my pun last week. Like him. Don't love him. I'm funny here. What can I say? Bring back the German, Frank. I need Frankfurt. Yes. What's going on? You okay? The music stopped playing in my left ear. 
<laughs> but I can hear it when people are talking. Oh, you figured it out. The aux cord's a little. Thank you so much. I thought I was, I thought I was, you know, the left half of my body was going into shock. <laughs> um, I like Green Bay. I really, I have Najee on fantasy. That's the only reason I want to see them succeed is just for Najee, so I can get points and win and keep my winning ways in that league. But, um, I don't like Steelers fans. They're annoying. They're obnoxious. They're abrupt, and they're the worst. Not the worst. They're up there. I just gave the meanest yeah, look to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I'm going to go Green Bay for this game. I just feel it in them. I think Jordan Love's going to have a good game. I think Christian Watson's going to have this is his breakout game for the season and be able to prove why he's a really good receiver in one of those top echelon tiers. So I'm going to go um, Packers. And the next one, you know, probably seven, eight years ago, if you looked at this game, you would have said, wow, this sucks. <laughs> But, you know, it's the year 2023. You got the San Francisco 49ers versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, boy. Um, 49ers dropped three straight. We also got to remember that Trevor Lawrence was on the Manning cast Monday. So I believe the Manning cast is still going to have that curse, and I'm going to go with the 49ers coming out with this dub. I think uh, I think they're going to get back on track. I think with the addition of Chase Young, um... They're gonna, they're gonna come out with a dub and get back at those to those winning ways and yeah, Forty ers are gonna come out with this win. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I agree. <laughs> I I think the Forty ers are digging for gold and they st- <laughs> they just found it right in the river. And you know who else comes back? Mister Debo Samuel, who has been out for the last three weeks. I mean. If you want to uninclude their buy, it's two weeks. But still, nonetheless, we're going to see a fully healthy offense, or almost fully healthy offense, fully healthy defense against a Jaguar team, which can be a coin flip sometimes. So I, I'm just going to take the more productive team. I think Purdy's going to get back on his winning ways, and I'm going to say three touchdowns for Brock Purdy. You guys know the story about the gold rush? Okay. Yeah. You know, they got, they hit, they struck. You know, they built prosperous towns around there. And you know what happened when the gold ran out? What happened? They went dry, baby. That's why you see all these ghost towns out there. And that's what's happening to the San Francisco 49ers. You can bring in Chase Young. You can do whatever you want, baby. I'm going to try and bring out my um, my Jacksonville right now. I hate Jacksonville. The city, but I'll see what I can do. And them boys out in that California IA, they don't know what they're messing with with these Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence is um, Jesus himself. <laughs> or a Targaryen. Or a Tar- he is Targaryen. <laughs> he likes the dragons. But I like Jacksonville, man. I like them in the AFC. Divis- the division is theirs to lose. And all theirs to gain. I'm looking at it now, and I think I'm making a mistake. So I think I'm going to go San Francisco. <laughs> You're going to switch again? Debo's back. Oh, and a, my. But apparently, there was a rumor that they're going to look to try um, try and see if they can trade Brandon Ayuk at the end of the season. Yeah. Massive mistake by them if that occurs. But, you know, we'll see what the return package is if that does go through. Man, my gold story was so cool. And now i got to switch it up. <laughs> Uh, I'll go San Francisco. Whatever. Everyone's <laughs> back healthy. Their defense is unstoppable, even though they've lost three straight. Whatever. I'll go San Francisco. Man, I'm so mad at myself. Wow, what a switch. My gold rush story was <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Move on to the next game. Um, New Orleans Saints, who um, are booty, and the Minnesota Vikings, who have an astronaut on their team. Give me the Vikes on this one. I think Josh Dobbs is going to have another day for himself. I mean, he won that first game for them at the end. He's got that clutch gene, so I'm taking the Vikes on this one in Minneapolis. Dan? I'm taking the Saints. I like the Saints. I've kind of taken the Saints all year almost. Uh, I just think they have a really good 
well-rounded team. They have a great defense. They have great corners. They have great wide receivers. Uh, my only complaint is Derek Carr maybe pass to Chris Olave more. Just, just more. You, you know, 20 targets a game would be nice. You've already been doing 15 targets a game. I could appreciate 20. <laughs> and then Chris Olave needs to catch all 20. I would like that this week. Yeah, remember, he was dropped on his head a lot last season. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> it's not like we all didn't see him get body slammed head first into the ground. I don't think I'm I just gonna let I don't understand why there's so much like hey, shock and awe to into this. It's one. only fair to me to do it. To That's you. not true. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Minnesota Vikings. TJ Hawkinson is questionable, but I think he'll be ready to play. And man, I just I love this Josh Dobbs story going on right now. In the past twelve in the past twelve months, he's been Cleveland, Tennessee, obviously, uh Arizona. Is there anywhere else I'm missing? Pittsburgh. And now back here in in the Minnesota, eh? Minnesota, <gasps> Minnesota. Oh, and we got like a little like break in there too. That was sick. <laughs> that was cool. Almost recreated that. I'm gonna go Minnesota. I really like them. Uh, Justin Jefferson is back practicing, so I think this team is gonna be fully regenerate, re-energized, and rejuvenated. I almost separate. I almost put the two words together. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings and they continue their winning ways and prove why they were a good team last year and the way they started this year is just the narrative that everyone created last year for them and they're going to start winning ways. They're going to start against the New Orleans Saints. Next is... Oh, the Houston Texans with C.J. Stroud. Boo-hoo. No one cares. 470 yards for five touchdowns. Ooh. I mean, hate a lot Houston. of people care. <laughs> Who? All the Houston fans. I must I remind you, Deshaun Watson was on this team. But he's not there no more. He's not there His anymore. impact is on it. His Damn. grabby little hands all over this team, and <laughs> I don't all like it. Dude, you can't say anything. You almost picked the Browns. Yeah, then you did a complete 180. Yeah. I just, I didn't know he was playing. <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> you they can't played. Say anything bad about him when you were about to choose him. They played the team. That um, dominated and outperformed the Buffalo Bills last week. The Cincinnati Joe Burr Bengals. He's back, baby. He leads all the NFL in completion and passer completion rating. Chris, take it away. Yeah, I'm gonna just have to take the Bengals on this one. Um, I mean, I know C.J. Stroud. Uh, I'm not gonna repeat it. But uh, going into Cincinnati, I think he's gonna have a coming to down earth game. Uh, Bengals are just. They know when to get, you know, they know when to turn it on at the right time. And I think Joe Burrow is going to have himself a day and the Bengals are going to win this comfortably. Dan? I'm going to take the Texans. I think the Texans <laughs> looked so impressive over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> they had a complete game. The offense was explosive. They let up 37 points. Still they also won the scored game. 39. Uh, I'm just... <laughs> You know, I, I think that they can get an upset against a really good team in the Bengals oh. uh, because they already upset a pretty bad team in the Buccaneers. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't expecting it, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I also want to see the Bengals lose for my own personal enjoyment uh, sense of Sunday Night Football. So, give me the Texans. I hate it here. <laughs> Mom, I want to go home. Pick me up. I'm scared. I mean, I'm going Cincinnati. They started... Did you just... What was that? I shrugged. What was that? Oh, that was a shrug? All right. That's Sass. your pick. <laughs> I do that to almost you all your guys' pick. <laughs> it's, 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 so it's Cincinnati. Joe Burrow is back to being the second best quarterback in the NFL. Second, Who, who's the first? You know who's first, Josh Allen. No matter. <laughs> I think he, we, we all have he's third first. Uh... Well, you can't put Jalen Hurts first. Stop it. He just put Josh Allen first. I, I can't said... put Jalen Hurts first. Well, no. th <laughs> look at them. They have nothing. We have more wins <sighs> than you. We have Super Bowls. 
They have nothing. We have a, a franchise quarterback. I have Baker Mayfield. Heisman winner. What? Heisman counts for something? Yes. Since when? <laughs> Since everything. Didn't matter to the Browns. Josh Allen's not living in the Heisman house. Devontae Smith got a Heisman. Yeah, he does. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Joe Burr, Joe Burr, Joe, Joe Shiesty. Joe Burrow's back, baby. And I'm, it's good for the league when he's on top. And I think Bengals are going to keep rolling all the way. You know what? I'll, I'll save my predictions for when we get there to the, to the latter half of December. But I'm going Cincinnati. Oh. I think... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to steal. A, gonna, I'm gonna have to steal a bit right here. Oh, I was gonna say, are you gonna switch up again? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do are, some. Are you stealing something? Some that copyright I love infringement. Doing? Oh, oh he's God. standing up, Dan. Oh my God, he's standing up. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, your king, Derrick Henry. Is going to fall. Oh, you're doing that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, thought were, I thought you were turning me off. No. He's going to kneel to the pirate king, Baker freaking Mayfield. Um, Chris, we have the Tennessee Titans versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> what is... What do you think is going on there? Well, Frank, I picked the Buccaneers to win it last week. Hopefully I can pick the Buccaneers again and they'll they'll prove me wrong. You sure can. You sure can. So uh, this is a divisional game, right? No. No, it's not. They're both not in the NFC South? No. Wait a minute. We're, I'm tripping. I'm <laughs> it's Saints, Falcons, Panthers, us. Okay, yeah. Wow. I just totally had a brain fart. <laughs> it's cool. I have those every day. <laughs> but uh I'm going to pick your bucks on this one, Frank. Hopefully, they'll come out with a win. Boom, boom, boom. Bucks, let's go. Your turn, Dan. Oh, he took it. Oh, Dan's ready to have a rant. He's closing the door. (laughs) Take it away, Dan. (laughs) No one, and I mean no one, steals my bet! It will always be my bet! Because the king is going to run all over your stupid little ships! The king is going to stiff arm Levante David all the way to the Pacific Ocean! You have to figure out what ocean the Pacific is, Frank. I'll tell you, it's right across the USA. Oh, baby. Oh, I see this team running up and down the field like it's a college game. Like they are facing a college team because Todd Bowles is your head coach and... Mr. Derrick Henry's going to give him a wave and say, Hey, hey, Todd, thanks for the free win, Todd. We love free wins. Will Levis, oh, baby. Him and DeAndre Hopkins. It's going to be a better pairing than Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans. Oh, yes. Oh, baby. And by the end of the game, the Buccaneers will be bowing down. To the king! Derrick Henry! Titans. We're just sitting here doing flips on it. I mean, <laughs> geez. And then I got, I got six words for you. Boom. 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 Are those sounds or words? B-O-O-M. 
Look Absolutely. it up. It's a word. <laughs> the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes. Last game, we don't want to talk about. Gave up 39 points. Had le- Gave them 43 seconds. That should have been enough time to stop them from scoring in the end zone. Wasn't. We're not making that same mistake. These boys are disciplined. Not because of Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles, <laughs> shiny bald head, can go run off into the Gulf Coast. Goes swimming along with the fishies. I don't care what he does. The boys are taken into their own hands. Like when Brady came in, he took that off. That's not, that wasn't, that was no one's offense but his own. That wasn't B.A.'s. That wasn't Byron Leftwich's offense. That was Tom Brady's offense. And I think Baker needs to have that same mentality. If we want to even smell, sniff, taste, lick, perspire anywhere near making the wild card. Or just making the divisional round. Because it's what we do. We're pe- we persevere. We're pirates for God's sake. We're beating the Tennessee Titans. Now, this is still going, so I'm just going to turn this back up. All right, let's get back into, like, you know, let's get back into some jovial fields, you know? Got the T- Detroit MCDC bite your kneecap Lions versus, oh my God, Brandon Staley still our head coach. We're never going to win again in our life. Los Angeles Chargers. I'm taking the Lions on this one easy. Uh, Jared Goff is going to have himself a day. Still do not know about this Chargers defense. Granted, I know they only gave up six points Monday, but that was to Zach Wilson and the Jets. Um... Lions are going to come out to L.A., catch this dub, and they're going to move to 7-2. and two. Dan? Sorry, I need to recuperate. <laughs> no, My voice is shutting down for today. Already right, sound raspy. You went all in on that last I one. I did, <laughs> and it was worth it. It was a beautiful segment. I loved Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Frank, you, they might not be your favorite segment, but it's mine. The Titans? No, I love King Henry bit. Oh, do you? Okay. I know sometimes you said you didn't like it, so I was like, maybe at the beginning. You, ju- you just had to grow on you. No, I love, uh, it. I love the bit. But uh, I think Mr. Mister Kneecaps is going to get a win. I, I just, I can't see this team losing. Like Chris said, the Chargers have a iffy defense, depending on the day. And uh, I, I just think Detroit's going to have too much for them to handle especially with David Montgomery back didn't they also add um, Donovan, Donovan Peoples yep. Jones oh yeah I just remembered from, from that from Cleveland mm-hmm. um, Herbert gave me 7 points in fantasy that's unacceptable <laughs> only 7 points <laughs> Um, for a high power Chargers offense 16 against the Jets is awful even though they have that defense is the only thing holding the Jets into any kind of prosperity. 16 against that's not great, especially when you throw nothing but just screens to Eckler and they go absolutely nowhere. So that's great. Uh, I think Detroit is the well be- um, well better managed team. Better well managed. I got the words in there. I just got to figure <laughs> out where to put them. I mean... I think Jared Goff is still one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the NFL. Amon Ross St. Brown is a dog. If they use um, Jameer Gibbs properly, like they have been recently the past two weeks, they'd be fine. Dave Montgomery is a great power back to push up the middle. Detroit's winning it all the way. Next up, even though they're second in the NFC South, I'm calling this toilet bowl, baby. You got the Atlanta Falcons versus... Why did we get rid of Josh Dobbs, Arizona Cardinals? Yeah, I'm currently trying to look up if Kyler Murray's playing that game. I believe questionable, but... Questionable. Um, You know what? That doesn't even matter because I'm going to pick the Falcons. Taylor Heineke, uh, I think he's an underrated quarterback. Who, Who did the Falcons play last week? The Falcons played the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Oh, 
It was so they, the, okay. It was that comeback. Um, I'm still gonna pick the Val Falcons. I mean, Cardinals are one and eight. Jonathan Gannon, I don't think is a head coach. Kyler Murray, if Kyler Murray plays, it's gonna be his first game back in God, I don't even know how long. Cod comes out the tenth, exactly. The so he's probably gonna be, you know. Cotting it up all weekend. Double. So give me the Falcons. First weekend double XP, baby. You know you got They're, <laughs> they're going to be 5-5. Five and five. Cardinals are just going to keep dropping. Give me the Cardinals. I think Kyler Murray is going to go out there. He's already played enough COD during his time off. <laughs> so I think he actually looked at the playbook for once and said, Oh, wow. These are plays that I can run. And he's going to beat the Atlanta Falcons. And after that, Arthur Smith will officially be fired from the Atlanta Falcons. See, now I would have picked the Cardinals for that reason. <laughs> but, I mean, Josh Dobbs was the, thi was the thing holding that team together. And, obviously, you see, when they face the Browns, they're nothing without them. And, you know, I really, I hate making the COD joke because it's not fair to him, but it's kind of, it's true at this point. New COD comes out. He doesn't know what's going on. And also, he's, I get your point. Maybe he's been playing COD for the rest of the, you know, how long he's been out. Damn, this is a new COD. We're talking about Modern Warfare 3. The campaign only takes like four hours to beat. Which, by the way, is ridiculous, but, you know, that's a topic for another podcast, another thing. So if he's going to beat the campaign on day one, play nothing but just, you know, gun game and just team deathmatch and everything, but I'm going to go Atlanta. Apparently a, pre a press conference held today with Arthur Smith. It was like five minutes long on why they haven't been using Bijan on the goal line. I haven't listened to it yet because it's, I bet it's just five minutes of yapping. <laughs> so, but I have to go against my internal organs and I have to pick the Atlanta Falcons. Next up, NFC East rivals. One team is on the flip of a coin of being a good team or a bad team every given Sunday. One team has the son of Danny DeVito playing quarterback, and their overpaid quarterback is um, the worst decision I think this franchise has ever done. The New York Giants versus the Dallas Cowgirls. I don't want to say it. Oh, I want to. This is tough for you. Oh, like just, is. just the words. Like I don't want to say. Don't. <laughs> the Giants are gonna win this. <laughs> Danny DeVito's son is gonna come out and be like, you know what? I don't like the Cowgirls either, and he's gonna destroy this team. I love it. Brian Dayball is going to come out with a win because no one likes Dallas in that division except Dallas. Give me the Giants in a surprise win. It's Danny DeVito. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> the great meme. But I can't, I can't take him. No matter how much I love calling him Tommy Danny DeVito. It just, they can't. They can't win. I, I feel so bad for saying that. Maybe when Matt Barkley comes in, maybe they have a chance of winning. But right now, I'm going to take the Cowboys. I think last time, even though it was week one, their defense just killed the Giants, like utterly demolished. And I even picked them up in fantasy, so I kind of need them to do well. Uh, so I'm going to choose the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting game. Oh, my gosh. I actually just went back to look at it. And week one, it was 40-0 to zero that yeah, the Cowboys 40 won. 40-0, to zero, baby. And that was, I believe, at MetLife. I believe so. You're, you're my you're right. I know it's off. I'll give my opinions later. But we have... I would call the legendary caller himself. Mr. Smith, I believe you are on air. I'm on the air with the the horseman of the Blitz who 
I stand behind in 99 and 9 tenths percent of what they say. Last week, Dan, you had me crying. I was driving. I almost cracked the car up when you did your booms. I, oh, that was yes. hilarious, man. That was rich. I mean, I wanted you to do three more. Um, you know what, Mr. Smith? I'll do some at the end of the show for you. <laughs> now I digress. I don't – look, quality play is quality play, and then lost play is lost play, and confused and befuddled football is that. The cowgirls, I didn't see any skirts out there. I'm going to tell Micah Parsons that, no, I won't do that to you because he'd come <laughs> up there and tear that studio up. Mr. Smith, Are you kidding me? me? They just lost against the Eagles. And here's the other thing. Dak, I'm going to tell you, that compound fracture of the ankle is haunting him. It reminds me of the scene from the great outdoors with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd and the bear came in and all John Candy could say is bear, big bear, bear. That's haunting him. He had his foot on the line. He was going for the conversion. Then the tight end landed with his knee on the touchdown line and the ball wasn't in. But playing a team that's 8-1, and one, I think, the Eagles, that's a hell of a game in Philly. Are you joking me? They are going to eviscerate the Giants, eat their livers, and pass their kidneys around on a char- char- charcuterie board or whatever they call that board. Are you joking me? Are you in the same football universe? You're kidding me, right? How can you demean the Cowboys? We don't have to bring up the fact that they eviscerated the Buffalo Jills, I mean oh. Bills, twice in the Super Bowl. Oh. But you're going to come at the Cowboys? They're playing some pretty good football. Micah Parsons is gonna he's gonna be a cannibal because he's gonna be eating up the minions. No giants. That the poor giants. I feel for them. I had a moment of silence for them the other night. I had to use the toilet and I had a moment of the silence before I evacuated my system. <laughs> okay? Then the Cowboys will be facing the Bills on December seventeenth. Now that's something to hold on for. Um, yeah, I love you guys. You know that. But the Cowboys have been playing some stand-up football. Their defense is there. They could use a little more offense. I think if Dak could get the monkey off his back of that ankle, I'm telling you, he's torn. Also, they should have gone to C.D. Lamb with that last pass instead of to whoever that tight end was. That was a coaching decision. They have McCarthy. I don't really think the world of him, but for everything they're doing, they're relatively healthy. And I think they're just going to get even a little better uh, heading down the, the line. But anyway, you guys keep it up. I was driving home listening to my favorite show, The Blitz. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Smith. I always love when Mr. Smith calls in. It's always a good time. It always is. Oh, that. <laughs> I wrote that cracked me up so much. That did. Oh. Um. Well, Mr. Smith, I'm glad you called because, you know, yes, I did call them. I call, I called them the cowgirls, but that's just because, you know, growing up, everyone, you learn to not like the cowboys. But in this game, I'm going cowboys. They they lose a close one against Philly. Should have been another close another close game for Philly. We have eight almost losses. Yes. <laughs> Let's but, just put it that way. Um. And I have Cowboys defense on fantasy. Hey, so that's where I, my point was. I need a week one look like defense. I yeah. need 30 points. I need Micah Parsons to, I mean, look, straight up just devour. Look, Frank, you're not you're not in uh, as bad as a situation as me, at least. What do you mean? With the Dallas defense. I don't have Jalen Hurts playing this week or Tyreek Hill. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, you're losing. <laughs> Thanks. No, I'm going to go Cowboys. Next game, we have another NFC East little little friend of yours over there, Chris. The Washington Commander Commies versus the... What the hell happened last week? Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I'm still gonna take the Seahawks in this one, though, Frank. Uh, this game's in Seattle. Um, I just see 
Geno Smith having a day, and Seahawks are going to move to 6-3 and three while the Commanders stuttered there because I usually call them the commies. <laughs> um, they're going to go down to 4-6. and six. I think the Seahawks are going to take this game easy. You know, every time Baltimore demolishes a team, the next week that team demolishes whoever they face. So, I mean, it's only been one team that they've demolished that has that history, which is the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I was going to say the Lions. I think it continues with the Seattle Seahawks, and they get their their big win against the Washington Commanders. I'm going to have to agree. I... I really like Sam Howell. I think he is the future of that team. You keep him and Scary Terry together, you have a very bright future if you just keep building around them and that offense. You know, losing Chase Young and Montez Sweat in the span of two days does something that I, um, does something to that defense mentally. And I think that's really going to come back to haunt them because I don't really think they got that much in return for them. So I'm going to go Seattle, obviously coming off a pretty bad loss last week. You know, these Seahawks are resilient. I love Geno Smith. You still have DK and Tyler Lockett out there. JSN. This team, they know how to fight, and they're going to keep fighting to the very end. I'm going to take Seattle. And for Sunday Night Football, this game gets to grace our very eyes with nothing but um, sadness and defeat. But both teams could have, you know, a decent game, depending which way it goes. Of course, I'm talking about Zach Wilson needs to stop being the starter. <laughs> New York Jets and the really was Josh McDaniel's problem. Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick the Raiders on this one. I think that's an easy choice. Um, Zach Wilson just is Zach Wilson. Um, this game's in Vegas. Uh, they only, Jets again only scored six points in MetLife. Um, I just don't see Zach Wilson going to Vegas and turning it around drastically. But uh, I think it's going to be quite a close game, but the Raiders are going to come out with the win. I honestly believe this could just be an all-defense touchdown game. (laughs) I I mean, in all honesty, Zach Wilson's probably going to fumble four times before Sawe says, let's put in Trevor Simeon. Aiden O'Connell's probably going to have three picks on the day. Uh, probably Zach Wilson also gets a pick or two in there. Yeah. So, in all honesty, it might just either be field goals or defensive touchdowns the whole game. And I'm going to take the Raiders to win because it's really a coin flip, and I like the Raiders more. Yeah. Um. I don't understand his undying love and fertility for uh, Zach Wilson. I think I used the right word. It's not fertility. It's in. Nope, that's not. That's cheating, not infidelity. <laughs> anyway, coming into the season, Zach Wilson was a backup quarterback. Why do you have your hands in your head? Was it what I said? I think Dan's going to lose fantasy for whatever this is. But, um. <laughs> Zach Wilson was a backup coming into the season. Yes, I know it's Aaron Rodgers. But Zach Wilson has had two years, three years to show that he could be a competent starting quarterback. He doesn't know what he's doing out on that field. He holds the ball too long to stop throwing interceptions. And when he does throw the ball, it's an interception. And when he throws the ball, it's where's Garrett? That's all he's got. And I don't know what why Robert Sala is so keen on sticking with this until Aaron Rodgers comes back because he's coming back soon supposedly this this man is a freak of nature mentally and physically (laughs) and I just don't that defense is the only thing keeping this Jets team afloat in the AFC but this new Raiders team man they have a new aura against them they have a new vibe I really like it I think Devontae Adams is going to be happy if they can continue this vibe and just aura of this new team are able to fix turn that into winning ways i think you know two weeks in a row i think it uh continues with the jets i have the raiders winning as well now monday night 
football. You know what? I need I need some appropriate music, right? <laughs> I need some some prime time music, baby. I need we need some night. Oh, no, nope, that's the that's the old one. <laughs> It's Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football. Mm, Monday Night. Between the mile high Russell Wilson cooking Denver Broncos versus the are we mortal Buffalo Bills. Okay, Mr. I lose the touch. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just, this is the what the media is saying. It's not me. I'm just putting it out there. I'm saying. Chris, take it away. Um, well, this Monday night game is in Buffalo. Orchard Park, to be exact. <laughs> um, I'm going to need to see more from Josh Allen if I'm going to pick the Bills to win this. But I'm still going to ride with the Bills on this one. Granted, the Broncos are on a two-game win streak, believe it or not. But Don't come look now. Coming, yeah, off, coming, off their <laughs> coming off their bye, you know, I just feel like teams coming off a bye are 50-50. Um, the Bills are definitely one of those teams that want to get it together. They obviously do want to make it to the playoffs. So I'm going to stick with the Bills on this one. I think the offense – I think you're going to see the offense turn it up on this one. So – Sticking with the Bills, they're going to come out with the dub. Dan? I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> Leave me alone. Don't look at me. I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills. Of course I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> what a what shock. World, what, what, a, what a big shock there, right? This is all McDermott's plan. Offense. Kind of wanted to see different offenses last week. Now he's just going to want to see one offense that gets almost a perfect game. Almost. I, I think we come close to a perfect game again against Denver. Von Miller revenge game. Latavius Murray revenge game. I'm ready for it. Monday night football, Russell Wilson is going to get sacked. Not once. Not twice. Not three times. Not four times. Not five times. Not six times. Not seven times. But eight times! Two by Leonard Floyd. Two by Von Miller. One by Greg Russo. Three by AJ Epinesa! Yes. I'm choosing the Epinesa breakout game. He's going to show his old self. He's been doing great all season, but I need those sacks. And AJ Epinesa is going to get him. Russell... I'll, I'll give you, you get 120 yards this game. There you go. That that seems reasonable for you. Around that range. And, and we're going to see Josh Allen. Not throw for 300 yards. Not throw for 400 yards. But we are going to be seeing a big 5-0-0. Zero, zero. We are going to see 500 yards. From the big man in charge. Josh freaking Allen Let's go Bills On Monday night football I like both teams <laughs> <laughs> You know the Bills they're struggling a little bit right now you know what Maybe they can turn it around right Just maybe Just maybe I'm picking the Denver Broncos Wowzers! <laughs> Zoinks! You heard. <laughs> Zoinks, Scoob! Ro Ro Reggae! Are you me. gonna change though, Frank? Or are you gonna switch it around and go, go with the Bills in like two minutes? <laughs> Off air, he's just gonna go. I, I, I misspoke. So, you know what? I, I, I gotta switch my picks. Goes no. on for two minutes. I. The Bills are mortal. They could feel it, and I think this loss is going to open eyes to the potential and realization of Sean McDermott needs to be fired, or should be fired. And if they lose, 
that's it's going to be a massive talk. I think Josh Allen has a great day, so you can't put the loss on him. That's all I'm saying. This loss will not be put on Josh Allen. It's going to be put on the game time management and the decision making of Sean McDermott as a coach. And it's going to start. It's not, instead of now just Buffalo Twitter and Bill's Twitter talking about it, I think it's going to grow into a media national wide question of what do the Bills do with Sean McDermott. And that's going to be our show today. Oh, wow. It's already four. It's already <laughs> four o'clock. We've got classes. To be taught and places to be. Got to get edumacated. Let's throw our socials. You can follow me at X or Twitter, whichever you still like to call it. Hopefully, Frank will give me a follow back. At C. Giacobello. This happens 17. every time. <laughs> this happens every time. <laughs> at, G- at C. Giacobello 17 on Twitter or X, that is. You've known this man for almost a whole two months and he just still haven't followed him back. Oh, he does. It makes me cry sometimes, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, what about the dub dub? Oh, what a good buy. Wow, you make him cry. <laughs> Ouch. Who's Tracy? You can find me on X at double underscore D capital W N Y. You can find the Blitz Instagram at the underscore Blitz underscore on underscore 91.3 FM. And then you can also follow the 91.3 FM WBNY YouTube channel. Where we post all our episodes on there as well, especially Spotify. And if you go on Spotify sometimes, you may see our handsome faces. So, well, we're going to try to do more of those in the future. I know, I want to be part of one. You can find me on Twitter at Frank561Lopez or on Instagram at FrankLopez underscore 561. And hopefully soon, I'm working on a logo right now for hopefully thinking of a new podcast, Sunshine Store. Sunshine State Sports, I'll keep you updated on that. It's going to be a fun little project that I want to run. You listen to the Blitz, 91.3 WBNY, Buffalo. We'll see you. We'll see you next Monday. Have a great long week. Enjoy your Veterans Day. Let's go Bucks. Let's go Bills. Let's go Sabres. Let's go Panthers. Let's go Eagles. But more importantly, let's go us. We'll see you on the other side. Enjoy your day.